they and they're having a portal war on the on the moon of Jupiter somewhere. Uh, for those <laughs> because know, why not? Fables explaining a little bit of World of Darkness, but we're going to go into this and learn more about World of Darkness right uh, now. Just, just, just to be just a disclaimer, I am completely new to anything. This is just secondhand knowledge I have from a dear friend named Common who told me about it last time I was playing Elden Ring. If this is wrong, to anyone who has more experience in the World of Darkness universe, I'm sorry. Most of my knowledge I know of is D&D related, and other random facts uh, about 40k I have. Uh, the last episode of Nor Norfolk Wizard game, yes, uh, that's the name of their campaign. Yeah, they're it's in... basically Super Cybertrace, and the other half of the party is doing American Pawn Shop. <laughs> American <laughs> Pawn Shop. Well then, anyway, well, I need to <laughs> I need to watch the rest of those, or at least listen to them while I'm working. But yeah, we're going to watch this. This will talk a bit more about so World of Darkness. Show, it's called Under the Parenting. You write it, and you might have seen it. It's, it's really good. World of we're going to watch it later on. Now, yeah, Tom and told me I need to watch Hunter the Parenting. Werewolves. I think you would like it because you streets. really like fantasy stuff. Honestly, Fable, there is also a game called. There was also a game where you just play as Fey. Oh. The me. rules are very confusing because Fey is very confusing. Didn't, I mean, didn't we watch that in the past? Uh, no. We oh, wait. Do you mean Hunter the Parenting? I'm not sure. Yeah. It's been a long time, but yeah. Normal. We'll need yeah, to refresh the series. A lot of people in the comments section report really liking it. It was really yeah. funny. So, thanks, guys. But lots of comments. But yeah, I just want to show this that series to my friends because it looks fun. Yeah. Anyway. Also mentioned they'd want to learn more about the setting, not just hunter or vampire or whatever beastie of the week we present. Ooh. The wider world of darkness. Yeah, realistic we hands. Comments a lot back in the old TTS days. The love of Warhammer. And this time we thought we. Uh, there's on so that. many so TTRPGs I want to play. Uh, I have no time. That's. That's this. So, yeah. if you want to get into World of Darkness, I would love to do an actual D&D &D play. Playthrough. Looks like Fable. With everybody. What did I do? <coughs> uh, I, well, to be honest, there have been a campaign, a, a module I have been wanting to run uh, for like newer players. Slash just keep it simple is uh, the Minds of uh, the Minds of Fandel or the uh, whatever freaking new things. Let me look it up. The Lost Minds. Well, Fandel. anyway, I do want to get you guys focused on this because it gets interesting. Okay. Um. Uh. Content disclaimer. This is our first time ever doing a video essay, and so this huh. is very experimental. Also. I am not the uh, master god brain who has been playing World of Darkness since, like, I was a protoplasm. This is... Age 700, 780. Someone who got into it, uh, like, about, you know, a while ago, back in high school, and just my personal experience. I mean, that's There's fine, too. It's always... It's more invested, per personal experience are always good experience. probably have a better idea of whatever the hell they're talking about than me. But... I've got quite a reasonable perspective on things, and I like to think I know what I'm talking about. Cut this. This was a completely unscripted ramble. No, dude, stay soon. I'm what? D. This is Ogre Popenang. Whatever that means. What? This is our very first video essay. <laughs> I don't so let's know. Get very first video essay. Look at these characters. Let's start with two things. Number one. World of Darkness is a tabletop role-playing game first, and everything else second. I wish they would make more games around it. Like, there's so many Vampire the Masquerades. There's one game of Werewolf the, the Apocalypse, which isn't very good from what I heard, but I've always wanted to play Werewolf the Apocalypse. There's video games, card games, books, etc. But it all so much out of the tabletop setting. Number two. As this is a role-playing game, in order to immerse you best into the setting, we're going to start with you. Yes, mm. you. Eh? Hey, there but I'm just a, a humble second. wolf man. I'm just a humble snow wolf. Have you ever gone on a remember, solitary walk at night? Remember, something Chrono always has to remember. Never to eat the yellow snow. 
Yes. Because I just did it. I didn't need that information. <laughs> no, <laughs> anyway, moving forward. <laughs> Learning about you World of Darkness. The pale glow of streetlights. Shadows smother your familiar surroundings. No one ahead of you. No one behind. Oh. No one but the faint sound of passing cars and the infrequent dull hum. Oh dear. It doesn't really matter where. A suburban cul-de-sac, some dark corner of a city, or maybe a dirt road in the country. It doesn't really matter. Does it though? Have you ever gazed up at those buildings? The ones cloaked by night and wondered... <laughs> what secrets are they hiding? No. Who uses no, not really. Who's I've always there? wondered what they look like covered in snow. I've wondered what goes on in certain buildings, but yeah. <clears throat> it's always the idea of the supernatural. Just on the edge of reality, you're see seeing something not anyone else gets to see. It's also how conspiracy theories get started, which are kind of annoying. A weird farmhouse yeah. you always pass. I, the crooked sign. Now, if I was to look at an abandoned building, probably I'll be like, what secrets do you hide? And then there's but, this. He's basically talking about the f the abandoned farmhouse. The apartment yeah. above the boutique store, whose lights flicker rhythmically in the night. Or maybe the suburban home, the one choked with weeds. We've never seen anyone enter or exit. But you've always spied that same rusted car in the driveway. Oh. Or you see a face in the window. Maybe. In our normal, everyday world, these things aren't that deep. Inside yeah. the farmhouse is a normal family. The apartment needs to call an electrician. The house is just vacant or has bad owners. Simple as. Yeah. The world yeah. of darkness is a lot like our everyday world. But more specifically, it's the secret world. The one hidden just behind the mundane. Yes, the, the supernatural. The apartment window aren't random. They're a signal. And when decoded, they tell their beholder the exact time and date of their death. Within that oh. vacant suburban home, a coterie of vampires gorge themselves on slumbering neighbors. Oh. As the nights pass, more homes grow vacant. Oh Missing no. posters paint the street lights. And that farmhouse, the family, Normal as normal can be, but if you look with the right eyes, you'd see the spirits of the countless buried in the dirt, howling the names oh. of their killers into bleak, uncaring night. World of Darkness packs a dark kind of horrifying. fantasy just past the everyday periphery, but there's one more twist. Hmm. Unlike our lives, where most people are shut out from grim and hidden workings, True. here, you're in on it. In World of Darkness, you aren't the man on the street. You are the vampire. Mm. You are the ghost. You send the signal. Oh yeah, there is one series called uh, Geist. Uh, I've, it's all about playing a ghost. Oh. You yeah. don't want to be a vampire. You gotta follow rules and you gotta be boring what? and all hoity-toity. Oh, sorry, I hear what your clicking. If, what if somebody designed a character for this uh -huh. game they're a hunter but they're also a vampire then you just be blade which you can't do that oh well darn i mean there's probably some mystical thing you can have but yeah anyway Bury the bodies i refuse to be detained by the rules of the, of the <laughs> game world oh my god yes you can Thomas, oh. Did you? Yeah. oh my god oh. i will be blade the masquerade <laughs> Yep. Oh, this is getting good. I'm so excited. I almost made a joke, so but we'll move, we'll move forward. Gothic. Fight you. It is. <laughs> well, you can throw all that in the garbage, because World of Darkness is also Clown World. Hello, welcome. <laughs> Hello. He cut his way to vampirism, and everyone hates him because he's famous. <laughs> right. Fucking scary. It's an evil fast food chain that puts little things oh, into the cheeseburgers. It is over. This oh, is wait, also let's go. I love welcome. this. Dracula is real. He cut his way to vampirism and everyone hates him because he's famous. Oh, I love this. 
It's an evil fast food chain that puts literal demons into their cheeseburgers. <laughs> it is owned by the same corporate death cult that owns the evil beer company doing the same thing to their beverages. The reason they do oh this? To subtly convince random people to beat their wives. This is not a joke. <laughs> <laughs> oh my I love god. the masochist face. <laughs> that is so funny. How are you? <clears throat> how are you feeling, Fable? Ah, uh, same as always. Just confused. Okay, let's Why go even deeper, Fable. That that's Why a secret, Cap. He's always confused. It's true. But well, why literal demons and hamburgers? What? And in beer. Because why not? Because why not? Also, let's go deeper. He said we're going deeper. More? Oh, I can give you more. In 1914, a deranged inventor named Sargargo was so disgusted at the capacity for mankind to destroy, he brought a giant Zeppelin armada for all of his cities and declared himself world oh emperor. God. A hit squad composed of secret agents, killer robots, and bio freaks were barely able to force him to retreat. And then real life scientist Michael Faraday vaporized him so hard they both exploded. And just forgot oh my to God. Because the new world order covered it up. I feel insane! And I'm not even talking about the steampunk explorers fighting Nazis on the Hollow Earth, or, or the ancient oh kingdoms of the Lizard King setting. <laughs> the <laughs> the kingdom of the Lizard King! So, how do you feel now, Fable? Yes, Lord! Of, of course there's Nazis in the Hollow Earth. Hollow Earth can't just be Hollow Earth, can it? No, it can also have <laughs> the kingdom of the Lizard Men. Okay, yes. that one is that one's normal. It's just the Nazis I have a problem with being in Hollow think, Earth. That's the problem. How do you think of Sir Varga taking over the world and then getting murdered by a real safe scientist Michael Faraday? <laughs> yes. It's just Michael Bay. <laughs> it's Explosion! And, and apparently Biofreak cyborgs apparently attacked him. I don't fucking Got some pretty okay, stuff so somebody it. needs to make a bad I'm guy like that's just Michael Fe Michael Bay, but There's he's also a wizard a moon that hopping explosions. war that the mages are fighting against each other with portal. It's, a lore drop. Oh it's also a cool <laughs> sunglasses. Let's, uh, take a step back. Okay, back to serious. Save for those moments where the comedy of absurdity of a situation just completely takes the reins, you probably won't notice how incredibly <laughs> elevated the world what? is, because Vlad plays it pretty grounded. Only the DM, or storyteller, really sees how deep the rabbit hole goes. Makes sense. For most everyone else, it kind of feels like the world we know. Yeah. Just a little darker <laughs> and more absurd. For yeah. example, Vlad vampires are thought to bear the curse of Cain, the first murderer featured in classical hits like the Bible. In classical hits yeah. like the Bible. Oh my Bible. god. <laughs> but yeah. I just want I to find a strangely one. powerful holy sword. Either holy or powerful moonlight sword or something. And just have it with me and be like, this is really cool. I wonder if this can give me superpowers. Literally doesn't matter at all to the 20-something stoner who got turned by his Tinder date. How? Pretty much. None of that lore actually matters to the dude that just got turned into a vampire. He could live in Skeen for hundreds of years, and it still might not matter. In fact, it probably yeah. won't. See, Wad has a lot of advantages in setting itself in our world and our time. Wad. Yeah. In World of Darkness, you aren't just relying on what a DM There's thinks a of, of an evil world should look like. You're relying on a DM's knowledge of the real world to set your scene. Oh Most dear, the real no world. Idea what a medieval economy looks like. They haven't really I'll thought do, uh, through oh, how the world would God, change. I'm doing good. Oh, <laughs> knowledge of the real world to set your scene. Most DMs. So uh, faithful. So you want to play the faithful creed? Probably. I'd be very estranged by having a magical sword, but I feel like anyone having a holy sword and suddenly surviving because of that sword would become a lot more faithful, don't you think? <laughs> Fable said he would be screwed. Uh, yeah, yeah, the knowledge. I guess he's no idea. I guess he's never touched grass. No, I haven't. No, it makes him <laughs> sneeze. That makes yeah, so much like more sense. Now. What the whole economy looks like. They haven't really thought through how the world would change if a ninety-foot giant ship lightning in the local textile industry. <laughs> Nor should they be expected to. <laughs> I'd be a lot to expect. This is like how the DM is like cross-eyed. Yeah. 
You live in the world you're playing in. True. You know what happens if you call in a bomb threat to an airport? You know about how long it yeah. takes to drive from Houston to New Orleans. You know how much gas costs, what can be found at a local grocery store. And the shit yeah. you don't know and need to research? Brother, it's the real world! Got, a, what do you got think? you covered. Well, thank you, Connor. It's gonna happen if a 90-foot giant shits lightning on your local meter. <laughs> 90-foot giant just appearing. And shits lightning on everything. Not Pretty just much. being our world, Wad has its own feel too. Yes, a lot of familiar locations exist, but World of Darkness is going for something a bit more elevated than an adventure localized entirely within your local Greggs. In my completely mm. subjective opinion, Wad is best described as No Country for Old Men as directed by Suda51. No that is a strange idea! <laughs> I'm not sure oh, if I... Dude. I'm not sure if I would be okay with Travis Touchdown just mur just murdering guys in no country of all. Doesn't necessarily mean Anton Chigurh running around with a bean katana. <laughs> necessarily. Instead, it's the dry humanity of no country for old men. Skirting the edges of the law and the world of the known. Looks like yeah, the familiar town see that. fiction painfully meets fact. You know Heroes what I would have to do to hide if I was having a giant, like, holy sore on my back? I would have to put it in a freaking guitar case. Oh, wow. Well, yeah, because it's... Do you know how big a claymore is? It's pretty big. Right. Yeah. Mm. Well, evil is implacable, inescapable, Oh, mundane. imagine this. Mm. So, imagine you had a character that was a crazy scientist that made lightsabers out of holy light in the game. That would be... That's actually not a bad idea, Chrono. <laughs> but how would he get holy light? Of all things. Science and holy magic. And no less immune to the normative conventions of the world. I don't know. <laughs> the coin travels across time and space mm. from minting to now to save a cashier's life. And another maybe there's the same artifacts that emit holy light? Else's. Maybe. Or maybe both were as meaningless you as the money the people died out of for. Those artifacts? Into this formula comes the saccharine madness reminiscent of Suda-51's No More <clears throat> Heroes or Killer 7. Hammer horror monsters run webs of shadows where blood they is will lubricated to an uncontrolled... Faithful Creek things I'm... in the upper limits. Cool. Oh, uh, they still become a Knight's Templar. Or a Crusader Knight. But yeah, uh... yeah. Uh, I haven't actually played really any F Suda51 games. I honestly should. I've seen a playthrough of the original, or I think it was the sequel of uh, No More Heroes. The song is catchy, though. Global mosaic of agendas. Just as characters can be drab like No Country, they can be bright and shining. Vibrant with camp, mystery, stupidity, or intrigue. Yeah, There's a sense that you're caught that. in this bardo state, a place between life and death, between the pawn, the king, and, if you're fortunate, the errant spanner in the works. It's a celebration of mayhem, decay, or at least the people who live amongst it. Yeah. Maybe absurd, but those absurdities just mimic the off kilter beats of our own manic world. Honestly, it's basically the saying of, it's... It's insane what's going on here, but it's your world and you have to live in it. <clears throat> yeah. That is weird. That's an interesting idea. That's just my take on it, though. My world of darkness. But to hear Wad describe itself, the term it lands on is gothic punk. I like it. It's got a nice ring to it. But what exactly does Makes that sense. mean? Well, to hear it from them... The term gothic punk best describes the decadent ambience and rebellious gothic fervor punk. of the world of darkness. Violence blends with elegance as wealth and privilege mix into the panoply of fear and cultural Ooh. conflict. In cracked, squalid cities, people dance and while away the hours you know, in glittering social clubs, trying to that. ignore the urban centers. I decay. honestly have just seen it as supernatural or urban supernatural. Because basically supernatural yeah. is more or less just the same modern setting, but there's a hidden underground <laughs> or hidden secret yeah. society or, you know. The towering yeah. buildings of the downtown scene... Then again, usually those don't involve the normal world unless it's, like, them trying to hide it or 
them basically fighting to preserve it. To art graven styles. Yes. By contrast, slums royal with strife and warfare as desperate masses of humanity claw at their pieces of turf. Under the gleaming spires of the church, the halls of justice, and the artifacts of society, the masses strive for lives of comfort and refinement. Hmm. The gothic image of looming architecture is everywhere, chased with gold and silver as it watches over the dispossessed. In contrast, punk nihilism echoes in the overpowering despair of dreams destroyed. Ignored by society, the less fortunate rebel. The upper classes revel decadently in their wealth, while gangs, criminals, the insane, and the deprived maraud uh, through crumbling neighborhoods. Sounds about the right. Buzz of I can see where it's very dystopian, so I can see where the punk aspect comes from. Revolt through shocking yeah. displays of also, you sound a little quiet. Is everything heart, okay? Faith Chrono? and mysticism. Yeah, I'm fine. There the world yeah. careens yeah. down a fast track to self-destruction. With this mic I got, you have to be like directly in front of it. Once an escape. Everyone wants an escape. I want to escape where I am from. That's oh. the creator's vision, and honestly, it rings true. Most game lines have that kind of dichotomy. The one between the monolithic power structure versus the burgeoning voices of those that haven't quite bought in. What could a setting where Draculas control Amazon's board of directors be if not gothic? What <laughs> is a setting where you can smash their faces in with a golf club if not punk? <laughs> it's true. I just realized that looks like Vampire Andrew Ryan. Oh my god. <laughs> Fable a man chooses, a slave obeys. Matt, would you kindly? Just, just, would you kindly, Matt? No. But you can't. Before I get sidetracked on a never-ending ramble hole, though, uh, besides the unique feel and elevated supernatural shenanigans, being set in our world has advantages other than knowing how much a hot dog costs. <laughs> it also gives players at the table an onus to make characters that feel real. Sure, True. those real people might be vampires or have some elevated profession like hitman, rockstar, criminal, uh -huh. CEO. <laughs> it also empowers you for PC, a 28-year-old garbage man named Chuck who just huh. happened to get wrapped up in whatever game line he's in. In my opinion, it's one of the most fun ways to play. True. Just make your character sheet what you'd expect a garbage man to have, give him a few hobbies, figure out what matters to him, and then just jump off from there. And see where you amble. It's not some Dark Souls wretched playthrough handicap either, by the way. In my home vampire game, between the member of the esoteric snake cult and the overworked car mechanic, <laughs> it's the car mechanic that's left every encounter with a body count, and the cultist who tends to have to staple their tongue back in their mouth once some mean beastie caves their teeth in. Wow. All of this is probably overwhelming, and that's kind of on purpose. Hmm. But Watt has this really bad reputation sometimes. It's a game only for ephemeral thespians who take their role-playing and setting very, very seriously. Funny enough, I did hear a story of my local game shop where this guy who got way too into Vampire the Masquerade and would come dressed like a vampire to <clears throat> people's <laughs> workplaces and they were just like, Dude, what the fuck are you doing? I'm working right now. <laughs> oh dear. Yeah, so that's why they couldn't play much of that anymore. Cause... And, yeah, those guys definitely have a place. Quite frankly, close-knit communities of goth LARPers built this fucking city. Yeah, I, I can see strange, it. But you might also think that the world is flat, so get over yourself. <laughs> but, much like in our world, in my most humble of opinions, Wad is a lot weirder than that. It's not some solitary penumbral orb of misery and mope. It's fucking hilarious and strange and warm and heartfelt, just as it's tragic and dark. Watt is a yeah, place where, in like the real world, you can go from horrifying tragedy, harrowing encounters, dreadful monsters, and then have a two-hour in-character argument stuck in line for fast food, trying to explain <laughs> to Dale, the food service worker, why you're covered in foam or blood. <laughs> it's a crazy world. Dude, listen, I, listen, I clean houses. I had to clean this one dude's house. I don't know why he had a dead goat in there, but it fell from the roof and it landed all over me, man. 
<laughs> the hell? The, funny enough, that isn't too f much of a stretch from something that almost happened to me at work. Only difference is it was a bird and not a goat. And there are so many different flavors of Vlad to choose from. Run as a monster, clinging to their humanity as a vampire. Be a frantic survivor, desperate to wake others up to a supernatural menace and hunter. Or turn into an eight-foot werewolf and fight a radioactive death shark in werewolf. Yes, this is- That actually sounds cool. I actually did want to play Werewolf the Apocalypse at some point, just be a cool werewolf man. But yeah, some of them are basically just fighting for the environment. But I prefer if we did like a city run or something. Something that happens in Werewolf? Yes! It's cool. It's awesome. Oh my god, he's flying all these things. It's also is, dumb. Is all this yeah. pretentious? Uh, yes. <laughs> maybe a little too subjective. I, I mean, I did just tell you that Wad isn't so self-serious before hitting you with a few film school essays. But Cringe is dead and I'm still breathing, so that's the way it's gonna go. If anything, I'm rambling Listen, if Cringe was sure. dead, then Fable wouldn't be here. You son of a butt. Oh. interesting to you. Keep watching, and you'll probably like what you see. Oh. Part two. Game philosophy. See, as a DM... Before I, I keep selling you the legend of John Henry's hammer, though, I should tell you how Wad earns the accolades I've been heaping on it. Okay. Most TTRPGs are built on the famous three pillars. That's combat, exploration, and social gameplay. Some game... Would you agree on this, Fable? Yeah. This flex okay. especially yes, I would. Certain. Combat, exploration, and social gameplay. Pathfinder First Edition wouldn't be Pathfinder First Edition if you weren't busting the mechanics... Fa of the Fable! Oh dear. I hope he's okay. Oh I don't know what that sound was, and I'm sorry everyone who was listening to that. I, I don't think it. it was Fable's fault, so please do not blame him. I doubt he would do that on purpose. I mean, he might. I'm just <laughs> oh, they're cutting yeah. grass right outside. Oh, that sucks. <clears throat> oh, oh, great. Oh, great. Well, yeah, I've actually That's played... Always a fun time. I've actually played Pathfinder 2nd Edition. Yeah, it's uh, it's for people that like to min-max a good bunch. My character was not min-max in the slightest. He was just a Kitsune bard who was really, really good at talking. He, uh, he almost died during one of our fights. And I'm like, I feel so underpowered. But thank God our druid keeps basically cheesing the battle to the point where the DM is just getting angry. <laughs> Hell yeah. That's not even hyperbole. The, the DM the DM was literally trying to create scenarios where he could attack the the druid just to give us more of a challenge. It uh it didn't work and let's just say out of the 20 goblins and the like 10 elite goblins he sent after us all of them but 5 were dead within a first round. Well shit. Yeah. I would like to like have some... a, a playthrough kind of like that Legends of, Z of, of Various. Legends does. of Various? What's that? You know, those shorts that we've been watching? Oh, yeah. Oh, those kind of events happened in, like, small moments where you're just having fun. When you're with, when you're with a group mm -hmm. that you really gel with, that kind of thing usually happens. The gunslinger yeah. tycoon of the action economy. Yeah. Meanwhile, a game like Call of Cthulhu yeah. and social gameplay. I want to go back a bit. Flex especially hard on certain pillars. Pathfinder First Edition wouldn't be Pathfinder First Edition if you weren't busting the mechanics open like some multi-armed gunslinger tycoon of the action economy. Yeah, yeah. I wasn't doing that, mm. so I was getting stomped. Well, a game like Call of Cthulhu is all about the mystery and horror of Lovecraftian fiction. I have played one game of Call of Cthulhu, and yeah, when you find more mysteries and things, you get more. Basically, you gain insanity meter. Hmm. Oh my god, I forgot to post it on the Discord. Damn me. I got Work, please help. Hey, for... Yeah, I checked in it. I don't know what's happening, Common. I will be honest with you. I am, uh... I don't know why you can't say anything. Uh, let me check something. 
Oh, what happened? Uh, it's not showing any normal people. Did they fu- did, did- Oh my god. Twitch. Don't fuck with my viewers, please. Because it's not showing normal viewers. It's only showing VIPs. Uh, huh. Twitch is fucking with shit, so... There you go. You're back. There it is. <clears throat> Players aren't called adventurers. They're called investigators. Yeah, I played as a cop in Call of Cthulhu. And that's because the game focuses more on the pillar of exploration... With an Irish accent. ...than rushing down Yogsapoth with a wiki in a pocket full of dreams. <laughs> busting the mechanics open like some... I want, I want you to see that part, Chrono. Meanwhile, a game like Call of Cthulhu is all about the mystery and horror. <laughs> Lovecraftian fiction. Players aren't called adventurers, they're called investigators. And that's because the game focuses more on the pillar of exploration than rushing down Yogsapoth with a wiki in a pocket full of dreams. <laughs> <laughs> Just shooting an Eldritch God while crushing him. You could tell that his eyes were burning because that's what happens when you look at an Eldritch God directly. As you probably oh, yeah. guessed, World of Darkness is the role player's role play game with emphasis on your character first ah, and why? everything else second. Therefore, it leans most heavily on the social pillar. What does that mean? Essentially, if you're tuning in for Vampire Diablo, then there are better games for you. The systems okay. here are built around drama, suspense, and politicking. Combat's fun, but it's also incredibly lethal and risky. Any schmuck with a shotgun can get lucky and remodel your face into a vertical conversation yeah. pit. God damn. <laughs> uh, not wrong. Oh, Rain's doing a thing. I think she's streaming. Oh, dear. Oh, she is? Apparently. Yeah. Plus, of course, you're a werewolf. Oh. An eight-foot-tall killing machine of Gaia's vengeance and fury, except for... Oh, of Gaia's vengeance. Yeah. Also, no, it's still possible. <laughs> Come on, I'll run over there for a sec. I'll be back. Okay. Alright, see y'all. See ya. Oh, dear. Well, I preferred he stayed, because I feel like he would have liked that joke. Chrono has abandoned us. We so must I'm... abandon Chrono in the near future. Well, did you at least see this part, Fable? What does that mean? Yeah, Essentially, I've been here this entire time. Diablo, but... then you're like, yeah, just rushing Yogg'Sothoth with nothing but a blicky and a tree. Yes. Are better games for you. Also, sorry this for is... the giant noise. My uh, dad's cutting the grass, and he's literally still kind of near my uh, room, uh, so... It's a freaking... Uh, like, I know what kind of thing it is. It's a weed whacker. I hate those things. No, it's literally just a lawnmower. Oh, I, I'm I wrong, can then. tell the He was literally right outside my window, which is, which is like why it's so vibrating. And you know how my microphone can somehow pick up loud noises. You've heard it all when it comes to like trucks and motorcycles and birds. I, I it's very sensitive. I don't know why. Anyway, yep, yep, yep. please continue. Yeah. Systems here are built around drama, suspense, and politicking. Yeah. Combat's fun, but it's also incredibly lethal and risky. I Any mean, that makes sense. Shotgun can get lucky and remodel your face into a vertical conversation yeah. pit. Unless, <laughs> of course, you're a werewolf, an eight-foot-tall killing machine of Gaia's vengeance and fury, except for also, no, it's still possible. <laughs> more difficult. You're not invincible. Just more difficult. No one is. In why, I the game kind of love that no one's really invincible in this. Like, someone could just, some schmuck can just get lucky and remodel and blow a hole through your chest cavity and kill you. This isn't usually about plundering a dungeon. It's about maintaining whatever stressful life you're presently leading, struggling and changing as you're bounced between unseen agendas, all while fighting to make your own possible. I can actually work with that with the idea of having a holy sword. Being scared now that I have this object, that people will try to take it or destroy me just for having it. Yeah, I remember something though. What? Oh! Fable's dead! Oh no. Is the stream dying? Please tell me the stream's not dying. There oh, we go. Dear. I'm gonna still mute myself.
Okay, sorry everyone. I don't really know how to edit this part out, but yeah. Uh, just remember a sword, a scary thing. Are you talking about like, I'm not gonna have like Soul Edge. Plot is ultimately a game about the players, their decisions, their goals, more so than other RPGs. You set your agendas. You decide what's important to you. Your mm, storyteller is there sense. to guide you, to challenge you, and ultimately build a satisfying arc. True. Different game lines have different ways to approach the more social, character-driven aspects of the game. These approaches are universally interesting and something Ooh. I'd love to go more in-depth with for individual game lines. Sometimes I will say that I do just like looking at TTRPG books, and I really want to play them. Usually I'm never going to get the chance to. No, no, a sword is a weapon. It can be used to keep others safe, but it can also be a powerful curse. Yeah, having the Sword of Kings especially would be uh, terrifying for me. Imagine having the Sword of Charlemagne. <laughs> Being like, you shall be the next emperor or you have the right since you wield this sword. You must now defend the people. I'm like, dude. Dude. I'm a, like, I'm a, I'm a plumber. Later videos. That's why you use Here's a club. A nutshell, though. In Vampire, you play as a monster forced to drink the blood of the living to survive. Oh. Struggling compromising with your darkest self to retain your humanity. It's an experience best summarized in the signature phrase, a beast I am, at least a beast I become. A beast I in am. Mage, you are an enlightened will worker with a unique gift, oh. a near limitless power of magic. And with that magic, near limitless. you might literally change the world. The question is, how will you? Oh. Do you have the right? And have you thought through what happened to the world if you did? That is always a good point. Have you really thought through what's going to happen if you change the world using your powers? What happened if you didn't? Oh. Wraith in particular has a very strong concept. You're dead and gone. A very oh, that's the story. Wraith. Uh, the ghost one. A ghost with a whole world of ghost politics and ghost intrigue surrounding you. It makes you think of Beetlejuice. At its heart, Wraith is about moving on. Your goal isn't to become king of Ghost Mountain, it's to confront your death, accept oh. it, and leave your character behind as bravely as you can. Damn. This act of confronting mortality, of essentially starting play with a character who ideally won't survive, it's very interesting. Yeah. I think it's That's pretty powerful. Have, uh, oh. It's storyteller. Yeah. If you turn the game and start running through magic, that's true. Yeah, I'd probably never have what sword I have. As long as I don't have, like, the Blade of Cain, I'm pretty sure I'll be fine. I wouldn't want the Blade of Cain. Having any of the Swords of the Paladins or Arthur's Knights would also be a little terrifying. And the only reason more people don't play it is because another player at your table contractually has to whack you with a horse whip all game. <laughs> Kind of adversarial, but uh, but it can be good. Uh, only play it with your rabbi, your priest, your polycule, whoever you trust. Rabbi, um, your priest, your polycule. Um, Who's hey, a polycule? Let's go. Oh. Depending on the kind of creature you're playing as, you have different systems working to keep you more alive than the average Joe when some psychopath has belt sanded your skull in half. <laughs> but no matter what you are, you need to plan your engagements at least a little. Trust me, it's not going to be that crazy. Do you mean in terms of it not being the Blade of Cain? Because I'm all for it not being that. Fight dirty. Try to strike first. Strike fast. Strike when the guys you're trying to decapitate aren't staring directly at you. Because even if you'll probably win a fair fight, you, you could also suddenly and unexpectedly not. This uh. more realistic approach to combat not only encourages you to fight sparingly and find other means of resolving conflicts, but it also gives you, the player, a leg up on even the mm. biggest of bads. This is because the metric for oh fuck for like. essentially everyone in the setting is three to six people with shotguns hanging out somewhere they don't expect them. <laughs> so basically shotguns are the meta. The approach to combat not only encourages you to fight sparingly uh, and find other means of resolving conflicts, but it also gives you, the player, a leg mm. up on even the biggest of bads. This is because the metric for oh fuck for essentially everyone in the setting is three to six people with shotguns hanging out somewhere they don't expect. Always them. been, Mac. Always been. <laughs> for those who don't know, Fable is in my chat. He's seeing.
That statement on uh. the dangers of combat shouldn't be confused to mean every beastie is a pushover, though. No. Vampires take bullets like love taps. A werewolf pack oh. decisively wins the M1 Abrams matchup. Dear God, they can take down M1 Abrams all things? can essentially deal with anything so long as they've got prep time. Uh. But whether you're running <laughs> a hunter's cell, a vampire coterie, or a wraith circle... Circle, they're called circles. Anyway, no matter what your boy race circle band is called, the thing that can give you the edge over supernaturals more powerful than you is this. Luck. The base rule for everyone else in World of Darkness is something to the effect of fuck you, got mine. What? Most greater societies, organizations, or deeply troubled people tend to go it alone. When they confederate, it's usually on deeply unequal footing with strangled ambitions and treachery around everyone. That corner. is true. Predatory people act like predators for all the good and all the ill that nets them. Yeah, they so won't. That's a strength for your special group. Who... They won't allow themselves to sully their hands in a way by dealing with someone they believe is lesser, but they will do it if it means an end Ideally, to something they don't do want. Do not all hate each other and or are not actively plotting each other's death. Ape together strong, so if tactical plastic placement okay. fails you, know that just having a circle. Yeah, I have the world. The power of friendship is, even in life, very powerful thing. Dependable friends and allies is a hidden X factor. In That's why I'm thankful like for all the friends I have. For those paying attention, yes, you're goddamn right. The power of friendship is meta in the world of darkness, just like it is in real life. This shouldn't be taken to think that all supernatural creatures are weenies, though. Uh, vampires juggle dumpsters. The Fae can shoot what? death beams by playing the ukulele. <laughs> Fable, can you shoot? Can you shoot death beams with your ukulele? I mean, yeah. I just need a ukulele. Oh it's just that God. even every, with that kind of every firepower, fate can, damage in combat is even no nothing. Mark Henry is a very strong lad. Oh. But if I ran him over with an eighteen-wheeler, his strength would not avail him. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Probably. Uh, view it is mostly realistic. It's not as if there are painstaking systems meant to reflect getting your wounds infected or whatever. In fact, as dangerous as combat is, you can sometimes pull away with even the faintest of odds. Case in but yeah, I do like the idea of becoming a holy knight, or er, getting a holy sword and somehow becoming a holy knight. Like, getting the armor and everything and everyone, like, freaking out, like, what the fuck is going on? And me just holding the sword saying, I don't know. <laughs> but all I know is, go away? Points the swords at them. <laughs> oh, dear. Point. I have one memorable story of a game where one of my players very bravely leapt out and started doing <laughs> kung fu shit out of a heavily armed PMC board kickers. He beat the snot out of one, but was seemingly oblivious to the fact he had put himself point-blank range with his rear to a man with an automatic shotgun. This should have been the end of his character, for despite their kung fu moves, they had no protections outside of their leather jacket. <laughs> Yet, somehow, that bastard managed to walk away. But not just with their life, but with nary a scratch. Is that because it's a dice game and I rolled the worst damage in the world? Yes. But it also illustrates a point. Because on the other end of the spectrum, you have moments where getting shot point blank with a shotgun does not result in a small boo-boo, and instead bypasses powers granting invincibility and immortality. For killing an eldritch shark demon with a shotgun. Seen in fifth edition's Conclave of Prague, a lore event where a surprise Remember, shotgun, shotgun, uh, shotgun is meta. Apparently. Mortality. Uh, this is best seen in 5th edition's Conclave of Prague, a lore event where a surprise shotgun blast turned the perfectly chiseled face of Camarilla faction leader Hardestep the Younger into a goopy splattering of extra spicy element soup. <laughs> Despite the fact that the guy had a near-complete mastery of Ventru super durability. Personally, <laughs> That's hilarious. He got lucky shotgun when he wasn't expecting it and got his face rearranged. ...at it both ways. The combat isn't realistic in the sense that things are modeled realistically. And you have to make sure your wounds don't get infected with uh, Warhammer Fantasy shit. It's realistic in the sense that combat is confusing, tumultuous, and dangerous. No. Outside of Werewolf, Wad is not typically that combat-focused of a game. Hmm. So when it does happen, combat accentuates the social consequences of battle. Namely, the risk of death. So why then, if it's so dangerous, would anyone get involved in combat? Because you don't because, got a choice. Because, dummy, it's fun. That is true. But also, your characters probably have something to fight for. And if they don't, dumbass, you probably have a boss you're beholden to that's going to make you do shit you don't want to do because <laughs> they don't want to do it. 
Yeah, Whether it's your right, ideals, your right, survival, right. or pure self-interest, most inhabitants of the world of darkness eventually find violence filtering into their lives. Yeah, it's an unavoidable thing. Emphasis on corrupt systems of power. Almost every game line has a heaping helping of row, row, fight the power baked directly into it. I love that it's literally row, row, fight the power. <laughs> row, <laughs> row, fight the power. Touch the untouchable thing. Unless, of course, you choose to row, row, be the power. In which case, oh. your prerogative is making sure anyone fights the law has about as much success as the Bobby Fuller Four. Fight the yoke of the ancients as an anarch vampire, or jockey for your place at the top within the Camarilla. Huh. Toil to bring magic back to the world with the Council of Nine Traditions, or keep the masses moving towards your utopia and the technocratic union. Or fuck it, send it all out. Don't pick a side. Trouble inevitably make your own will side. Always come to you, but the choice and its consequences are always yours. So. If you're ready to play a tabletop role-playing game that focuses on exploring your own special snowflake as they struggle and suffer in a hostile world of freaks, if you're okay getting your head popped off because Soup Can Joe, the heavy hauling hobo, rolled six tens on their firearms roll, the heavy hauling hobo. Werewolf, wizards, and urban decay. World of Darkness might be for you. Uh. The only question is. Where do you start? Well, ready, the Fable? Answer. Is the video game? Mm -hmm. We should play this at some point. Yeah, this could be fun. I'm not sure what clan I would choose for this. I can't. It's too late, vampires. I cast gun. The forbidden cast. World of Darkness is lucky enough to have several excellent video games under its belt. But the one everyone talks about is Legendary Crime Against Semicolons, Vampire, The Masquerade, Bloodlines. Do not let punctuation fool you. Bloodlines is very, very good. A classic, some might say. Many mm. people might say. Many people might say better than me might say. So I won't go into exhausting detail. If you've never heard Hi. of this game, there are many excellent breakdowns on Bloodlines to pursue at your leisure. But take my word for it. If ever there was a one primer, by God, it's this game. In Aww. it, you play a freshly embraced vampire of your chosen clan, plunged headfirst into a web of undead politics, treachery, and other hot topics. Oh. Your decisions matter, but the characters feel human, and nothing has encapsulated the feeling of World of Darkness better, in my opinion. Is it flawed? <laughs> you bet your ass it is. Don't ever ask me what a Quajin is! <laughs> oh, yeah. We went over the video of that game. Uh, basically, Quajin are basically based off of if I remember correctly, the actual look at basically supposed to be Asian vampires that are based off of the hopping vampire. Mm -hmm. Anyway, moving forward. I highly recommend it to just about anyone who has ever drawn breath on the planet. Just, uh, yeah, play the unofficial patch because everything bad you've heard about Hollywood sewers is true. But I know oh. you want more. You want the TTRPG. Oh. So I'm going to tell you where to start there, too. Okay. But first, ad time. Oh. Imagine, if you will, you are on an airplane. It crashes no. into the Atlantic Ocean and miraculously, you survive. A scream. Another survivor dragged into the brine. Pins emerge. The hungering, deadly maw of a great white what shark. The hell? Swimming straight for you. In this situation, wouldn't you rather be? At Noble Night Games! Noble Night what the Games hell? given us a mysteriously sourced bag of money to promote this anti Mysteriously game. sourced and bag also of money. to remind you that it is the premier location for tabletop games I don't think they have these in, in America. Oh, wait, it does. Are you and your coven suffering from symptoms of dystopium <laughs> and looking for a new, fresh RPG franchise to fill the void? Oh, you are? Oh. None better to help Noble Night, night where you can find all you can eat blue <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? You want to play Vampire the Masquerade? Which one? How about Which Vampire one? Requiem? Oh, that one. That's gotta be. Oh, there it is. How do they do it? What's going on? And they have Vampire Requiem for okay, dummies. It's safe to come out again. War gaming? They got it. Boards games? They got it. The Spear of Longinus? They keep it in the back. Blue? What the fuck? All the glue you can eat. But what? You when that mafia buffoon <laughs> is sold out. <laughs> Well, add it to your want list. You get an email as soon as someone with the book dies and their possessions are contributed to the Noble Knight Game Archives. Thank you. Or uh, someone 
like, I don't know, sells it to them. Through their buy and sell program, which you can also do! All this with a free shipping within the U.S. for Ooh. any order over $149. As well as a flat rate U.S. shipping option with all orders shipped out within 24 hours. Which indeed covers your order mm -hmm. of 15 Blood Doom Tide supplements, you mermaid milk freak! Do you see this what? knife? He fights for your freedom. He does want to kill you, but he won't. Why? Because gamers like you populate his web store, buy his goods, Hold and on. temper his wrath. In temper his wrath? Who was D.B. Cooper? I don't know. But what the fuck? Like find the answer <laughs> We're doing over the D.B. Cooper com. thing? Paul, straight edition. So okay, have you played okay. Bloodlines? Yes? Great. Did yep. you not? Ah, uh, that's fine, too. I mean, it's a great game worth your time, but not all necessary. It's just useful. It's yeah, a great way to step into the world, especially if you have problems getting a stable group together for a tabletop game. Which can be a but problem. supposing you're ready for that step anyway. You've got a table wanting to try out World of Darkness. You, uh, know how to play a tabletop role-playing game, or otherwise... For the most part. Time. Where, amidst all these crazy logbooks, do you start? Well, that's a complicated question. Let me lead you to the answer. First, you'll need to pick which game line. Each game provides different Ooh. creatures for you to take the roles of, different themes and toolboxes to play around Mommy. with. For instance, love everything I've talked about with combat. Werewolf is, and always will be, the 20th most edition. combat focused wad game. Start your search there. Cool. Want to intrigue? Every game line does intrigue, but few do it as well as Vampire. Or fuck off, disregard all of that. You think elves are cool? Play Changeling. Well then. <laughs> Let's see. Changeling, I think, is the Fey one, but I'm not sure. But I know Fable hates elves. Going yes, to the I fifth do. edition of Hunter the Reckoning. I understand Cast that. Cast a mighty spell and play mage. If you fucking dare. Play whatever. The deep dive. All the dive. shit I talked about in themes is optional. You can make any kind of game you want with these systems. I'm just covering what the default is slanted towards. Here are the issues you're going to run into, though. Okay. For one, WAD has been around since the 1990s, and it can be easy to get overwhelmed by choice. Which book should I play? Which edition is the right one? Etc. That's number mm. one. Here's number two. Despite the wide bevy of wad games, they're not all updated to the latest. Changeling the Dreaming is, I think, a, the name of the Fey one. Edition. Fifth. In fact, at time of writing, only two are. God Usually damn. There's not too much of an issue playing between editions, but with fifth, there is one. Or, or well, more of one. Slight changes in how difficulty, damage, stats, and other things are handled make it harder to cross over with older games. This means you have several essential choices. Mm -hmm. Option one. At time of writing, only Vampire the Masquerade and Hunter the Reckoning have 5th edition variants. Thus far, oh. compared to earlier games, 5th edition games focus on smaller stakes and slower XP growth with weaker characters. This is done in service of creating a more intimate feel for the players. I can and understand that. It focuses on making you feel less like a character in the world of darkness and more like a person. In my humble opinion, it's quite successful at that. Early trends involve bigger factions being weaker and more flawed, and more of the onus is on the younger generations to fight for their place in the world. I can see that. I have overall less to say about 5th edition, largely because it's pretty self-explanatory. Pick it up, play it, and enjoy. Just know that everything else has yet to fully arrive. It's a That's strong edition, sad. and I'm sure the best is yet to come. I hope it's they make worth more. Noting, if you watch the very excellent LA by Night and New York by Night live plays, this is the version of the game they're playing. Ooh. There are new resources being pumped out for 5th with increasing regularity, and it's not going to remain the addition without all the other goodies forever. I'm just giving it slightly less focus, just because there's fewer mm. caveats here than other places. But it's genuinely worth your time. If you want to run a vampire or a hunter game, this is definitely the place to look. Option 2. 20th Anniversary Editions. Oh. Before 5th Edition, the edition of the land was WAD 20th Anniversary. These cool. were released, get this, in celebration of WAD's 20th Anniversary. They were essentially released for veteran players of the day, and as a result, they can be kind of rocky to learn at times. Oh, the maybe the Ascension. They have a firm grasp of the concepts within. A real gamer, I will get so... <laughs> what did that say? Option <laughs> 2, 20th Anniversary Editions. I want to see what In celebration is. of WAD's 20th Anniversary. They were essentially released for veteran players of the day, and hmm. as a result, they can be kind of rough. Listen to me, my blessed child. You must you read the entirety of Mage 20th Core Book if you want grasp to be a real it. gamer. I will disown you. My tendency of being either too reverential to old material or Where just plain it? sparse. But it's the Who've edition chosen I, by I turned out all right. So oh, still... so apparently the older editions of Hunter the Reckoning were basically people chosen by angels. Well, I highly recommend that. 
Most games enjoyed a pretty cool 20th anniversary release, and in my opinion, it's still THE edition to run if you want crossover shenanigans. Cool. Compared to 5th edition, you'll likely be able to roll out with a comparatively more powerful character, but there's also a lot more Also, I wonder if there's, like, like half werewolves or something. You know, like, not just vampires, but half other things. Balance isn't really at the heart of WAD, given it's just, I don't you know. know, not that kind of game. But it's a lot easier to break than 5th edition, for damn sure. For better and for worse. It's not enough that I'd not recommend Kinfo, them to Kinfolk, that's what you're talking about. Uh, probably. Newbie, but it is enough to warn about. So consider yourself warned. I just, I just warned you. I just warned you. Despite well, thank these you caveats, for the warn. though, outside of the occasional weirdly worded subsystem, it's not like 20th anniversary is a major downgrade. In fact, I know plenty of people who still prefer playing this edition to the newer ones, and I can't really blame them. Even for games with 5th editions, if you wanted to run a vampire game where you're all elders and not snot-nosed neonates, fuck mm. it, 20th ain't a bad choice. Ah. These editions are hideous, lumbering monsters. You'll notice I'm insulting them a lot. That's because I love them all. Hmm. I don't own just one 700-page Mage 20th Core rulebook. I own two. And one oh. has a weird stain, and I don't know where it came from. <laughs> 20th is also so accommodating that you can easily just take older supplements and quickly adapt or even straight That's up use nice. their adventures, powers, merits, and flaws in your own game. Even if the content you're looking for is ancient, you can probably dig through any old WAD book and find something that can fit in your game with a few tweaks. My friend Odoroshi once ran the prehistoric crossover module Midnight Circus for our home oh. group of 20th anniversary characters to great success. Even nice. though it was originally printed two months after my birth. <laughs> yeah. Sure, a lot of the content aged poorly. A, lo a lot of the content aged poorly. What? Oh no. The, the freak show. Oh no, the freak show. Except that many of the characters and situations. Freak shows and circuses were, um, have obviously aged pretty badly. Situations were fun and easy to translate to 20th parlance. The parts that didn't? Well, our storyteller just filled in the gaps with her own original content. Got rid okay. of the stuff she didn't like. It's not just modules either. Area splats, faction guides, hell, even some main game lines have languished in earlier editions. What is Orpheus? But it's all still accessible thanks to how adaptable the older storyteller system is. I mean... I, I am going to commit great crime! Oh, welcome, hi. Welcome back, Chrono. Uh, we just hi, got into more stuff. Something? Yeah, we are. We're learning more <laughs> about... Uh, okay. Yeah, we learned, apparently the original version of Hunter the Reckoning apparently had people being chosen by angels. But yeah, he's going over a bunch of the old stuff, like, uh, what it's like to play these games now, the different editions you should probably choose. He also talked about Vampire the Masquerade, which I feel is a game maybe you should play, I'm not sure. It is a horror game. Edition reprint. Could you imagine yeah. running the classic okay. tube of horrors in the modern system? <clears throat> well, oh. you could with Wad. I mean, that's also, important. the joke about literally, any, with Rod. like, basically, if there's like six people with a shotgun, they can just about almost kill anything. Uh, okay. Cool. Even a even a po werewolf in his war form. Up. Yep. Oh. Yeah. Oh yeah. A little side tangent here. Uh. I don't know if you knew about this or not, but uh, the new uh, Harry Potter Quidditch game came out recently. Oh, I think I saw that. It's actually a lot of fun. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. I just played it not that long ago. Hmm. Horrors, but, you know. Honestly, I feel like Chrono would probably be some sort of mage in Hunter the Reckoning. Circus Hell and the crab. Yes. Crab. This, this crab thing. What the hell? <laughs> anyway, the TLDR mage. is this. If you want to play oh, Werewolf oh. Mage, Changeling or Wraith, or if you have a style of play that clashes with 5th's design philosophy, 20th is the spice you're looking for. Okay. Have fun. Oh. Option 3, Stygian Madness. What? And sadly, not what all games got a 20th face? anniversary release. Some games have languished in their sordid states for eons. With barely but yeah, we were talking about one thing where they were writing a game for one of the older versions. It uh, took place at a circus. The problem is a lot of the content aged badly because... Involved a freak uh, show. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, freak shows have a. Rata and sight. Yeah, they have They're an few, well. But they are infamous. And some people really, really like them. Oh, yeah, there's one you play as a mummy. A game of Demon the Fallen or Mummy huh. the Resurrection. Demon the Fallen. Oh, You're going to be looking at old rules. Oh, no. Fortunately, these are going to be relatively self contained and explicable. Than the language of their own text. Okay. Game lines be like that. 
I cannot advise much in this juncture, for I have rarely afforded myself such terror. I've used even the Fallen rules for NPCs in certain games. They should have universal. <laughs> they should make a version of this, like for yokai. You mean as an NPC or a player? I mean as a player, uh, Chrono would probably be a very strange wild mage of some kind, because oh, he yeah, likes Harry true. Potter a lot. Yes. Harry Potter yeah, awesome. harrowing experience. But uh, it was like yeah, I think they should make since they done one for like demons and mummies, they should do one for like a yokai type thing. For that would be Japanese very mythology. interesting. Though they've done technically yokai are similar to Fey. They did do a uh, Fey the Changeling. Being oh okay. The dim waters of the river Styx <laughs> and losing. <laughs> uh, that being Styx. said, the games have their yeah. followings for a reason. Be brave, play them, and have fun. Mm -hmm. But know that if it's your first time, it's probably a bad idea to start here. It's yeah. It's too challenging once you have a game under your belt, though. Option four, Chronicles of Darkness. Oh. Oh, boy. Mm. This one is... The Chronicles of Darkness. Hot second. Here's some history. Sometime during the run of Wad, the oh my God. decided that enough had been done in the metaplots to warrant a global upgrade. Oh. The modules were released for end-time scenarios for I all I knew games. kind of about this. In lines. You got to pick your favorite ending, and the idea was is that they'd say goodbye to the setting forever. Here, take a hot second. Here's some history. Sometime during the run of Wad, the developers decided that enough had been done in the metaplots to warrant a global upgrade. The modules were released for end time scenarios for all game lines. Huh. You got to pick your favorite ending, and the idea was is that they'd say goodbye to the setting forever. In its place came the new world of darkness, now known as the Chronicles of Darkness. Ah. This is a completely different confusing continuity that is extremely different from the old world of darkness how so in chronicles of darkness you do not play vampire the masquerade you play vampire the requiem oh you do not play changeling the dreaming you play changeling the lost oh interesting confused yet so am i this isn't quite wad uh, for warhammer fans think of wad as fantasy and chronicles as age of sigmar oh. for one the rules and systems have been streamlined and optimized in a way that even 5th edition took notes from. Cool. For two, the world and game lines are similar but very distinct with some real standouts. In particular, Hunter the Vigil is a very cool take on the Hunter experience. It makes me think you're going into the Matrix, the Matrix the with that look. version of The Reckoning focused on supernaturally augmented imbued, Vigil focused on normal hunters. Yeah, it sure the does. The Reckoning focused on supernatural Age of Sigmar. Yeah. For one, the rules and systems have been streamlined and optimized in a way that even 5th edition took notes from. Okay. For two, the world and game lines are similar but very distinct. I wanted to go back to this point real quick. In particular, Hunter the Vigil is a very cool take on the Hunter experience. Whereas the older version of The Reckoning focused on supernaturally augmented imbued, okay. Vigil focused on normal hunters, introduced numerous cool and creative hunter compacts, Sorry, as I well as the to go concept back of becoming a slasher. What? A fucked up kind of hunter that went from being a slayer of the supernatural to a metaphysically augmented serial killer. Oh, so basically they killed oh, enough wow. supernatural creatures that they basically became one. Each five no longer focuses on the imbued, and I think that's because Hunter the Vigil just kicked so much ass. Changeling the Lost also gets its Oh, so originally Hunter the Recting was about the imbued. Backalades. Changeling the Dreaming is well known to be somewhat inscrutable, difficult to understand, and a massive glowing orb of madness floating silently in the classic Wad catalog. That sounds just like Fable. And since he's muted, he can't say anything against that. Changeling the Lost simplifies the story a bit. Instead of playing as the Fae, you play as someone cursed by the Fae, oh. which grants a very distinct play experience. So. It also makes That's the games radically different from each other, to the point where I almost warrant to say the loss is just its own weird little thing. Chronicles is still getting updates, such as an actually living mummy game, and Ooh. several unique permutations like Deviant, mummy, the curse. and Geist. I kind of want to look at these. What is Promethean the Created? If it tickles your fancy, it's not a bad hmm. idea to check out. But you should know if anyone in the comments can tell me what that is, please do. Well, that if you're looking for World of Darkness books, Chronicles is something different, so be aware. Now, all of these different ways to play may sound intimidating, but don't worry. Yeah, there's so there's many books. More. What? Wad Dark Ages, Wad Wild West, Wad of the Victorian Age, what? Wad's incredibly vibrant and legendary LARP scene. There's now <laughs> Wad of the Victorian. I want to go back one second. But don't worry, there's even more. Wad Dark Ages. Wad that Wild sounds about. Dark Ages makes sense. Werewolf in the Wild West. <laughs> Victorian Age. Wad's incredibly vibrant and legendary LARP scene. There's, there's a lot. 
Unfortunately, it's not all half as intimidating when you realize the base mechanics of World of Darkness are all incredibly simple. Mm. Better still, for all their sub-variants and additions and blah 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 blah, outside of the unique gimmicks for each supernatural subtype, the core mechanics deviate very little between the games. That's because every mainline book you aren't playing can serve an additional purpose as a bestiary. Your non-furry friends deny you the opportunity to run the werewolf game of your dreams? What? That's fine. Throw a mid-level get a Fenris into their condominium and watch the fireworks. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Fable, unfortunately, our furry friend cannot run the furry game of his dreams. Because he cannot speak. The sole exception, of uh, course, is Fifth. But oh even that can be done. The only, the only furry game of my dreams is Flashbang, you know they're furries. Because I think that's hilarious. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> that's the only thing I would want if I have to hang out with others. Just start throwing Flashbangs all over the damn place. <laughs> the core mechanic of Wad is this. All editions utilize a simple D10 based dice pool system. That's not bad. D10s look like this, and character sheets look like this. At character creation, you decide which skills and attributes your character has by okay. filling in the dots with the game's allotted budget. Dots represent how good you are at something. One dot is below average, two is average, three means you can make a career out of it, four oh. means you can make a great career out of it, and five means that you're one of the best in the world. Someone with Strength 5, for instance, is one of the strongest people on the planet. Oh. Someone with Medicine 5 might be an internationally acclaimed neurosurgeon, whereas a med student might have Medicine 1 and a nurse Medicine 2. Ah. So, okay. putting that into practice. This character has three dots of firearms and three dots of dexterity. Sorry, and there's a fly near me. Fast to boot. Oh. Unfortunately, a blood-sucking freak of nature is running right at them. They need to put those skills to good use. They need to roll to shoot that bastard into the Stone Age. When making a roll, you take a relevant <laughs> attribute with the skill you're using, in this case, dex and firearms, and count their combined dots. Okay. Then you just roll that many dice, and so that's a plus six. You'll have a target number, usually sixes, and everything above that on the dice are successes. Okay. Tally your successes, and that's the result of your roll. In this roll, we got three dice hitting our target number, so we've got three successes. A direct hit! With rare exceptions, this is essentially how every action in the game is performed. Want to stab a guy? Dexterity plus melee. Oh. Want to not shit yourself on a first date? Charisma plus expression. <laughs> Easy peasy. The advantages of this system are its ease of use and flexibility. Example. Firearms' typical function is to point guns in people's directions and pull the trigger. But if you wanted to field strip a gun, it's also what you'd use. Ah. You can also use it in an investigative sense. Perception plus firearms to determine what kind of gun scooped some poor victim's brains out. Interesting. Hell, if storyteller is feeling especially kind, <laughs> you could probably use it in a social encounter too. Impress your fellow gun freaks by speaking enthusiastically of your rifle with charisma firearms. <laughs> rifle. Well, if you're about as intimidating as a baby can be. <laughs> A rifle. A rifle. Impress your fellow gun freaks by speaking enthusiastically of your rifle with charisma <laughs> firearms. Waifu. Alternatively, if you're about rifle. to be intimidating as a baby capybara, as a last second desperation ploy, perhaps you can scare off an encroaching foe with a sick display of gunmanship. Manipulation plus firearms. Well, oh. I, or else you might catch a hollow point in the skull for your troubles. <laughs> Are these combos the only combos you can use for such things? Absolutely not. Sometimes actions go. can actually be accomplished through multiple combinations of skills and attributes. Cool. For instance, a storyteller might allow you to field strip a firearm with the firearms, technology, or craft skills, but not all roles are equal. A storyteller may require more successes for roles they think are a stretch. I'm going to use my clown horn to defuse this bomb. Dr. PC to synthesize a drug using medicine, but I might make it easier if they used science, chemistry, or botany instead. Huh. Personally, I love letting my players get creative with skill use. It's the same reason why I encourage most PCs to have a few useless skills. Sure, your two dots in law might seem useless at first, but when the party face fails to convince that cop that you definitely 100% know nothing about the string of disappearances you've been causing, your dark horse law skill could be the difference between getting him to come back with a warrant and a prison arc. That's sort of the prison soul arc. Of what makes Wad Wad, you know? It's got an incredibly easy to get into dice system that doesn't overly concern itself with mechanics bloat. It's not completely rules light, like powered by the apocalypse, but it's less hindered by exacting systems and like, I don't know, item carry weight. What can you carry? That's I don't a good know. point. What the storyteller thinks you can carry. If it beggars belief, make a check. Okay, you'll know how carrying all that weight affects you. A good, adaptable storyteller and a gaggle of creative miscreants can have a hell of a time telling their True. story using this system. And really, yeah. It depends on the creativity of the group and of the. DM. 
Or GM, whatever you want to call it. I do like that guy Five, wearing six. the uh, Mitsuri wig from Demon Slayer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the end. And yeah, that's yeah. pretty much it. It's called I mean, Storyteller. More, a lot Hopefully more. I'm very excited. Too much to willingly shove in I video. believe it will I be good. Coming as long as you work hard at it. Cover you with tales of the spirited larp yeah. scene. Talk about all the incredibly poor. Also, one important thing about always being a storyteller, DM, or whatnot, always be able to be a bit flexible because you don't know what your players are gonna do. So, like, like try to be like aware. The mafia book. Oh my god, Alpha loves the mafia. Dark books. world. Let's get it away. Dark we, world. The mafia. What the hang hell on, is that? Each wad game line would take its own video to get into the gritty of them. The unique mechanics, themes, and other nuances. So fuck it. If you want more videos breaking down individual WAD game lines, let us know in the comments. But for now, to avoid a deadly bloated mass, we'll wind down here. Okay. So let's review. Step zero, play bloodlines. Step one, get a good group. Step okay. two, pick your game and addition. Step three, pick a day, time, and place. And step four. Is you know what I'm surprised of? If you're making you have a holy knight sword, there's I have actually a quite a bit of knowledge Start of those running. because I just have a love of like holy knights and stuff like that and magic that knights because who doesn't like I shooting things from their it's swords the most fun i've ever had rolling dice don't True. Quote that. this video and hunter the parenting we helped some folks get into this incredible game and community that's why i love the moonlight sword in uh in uh, bloodborne and if we haven't failure perhaps next time Oh no. You have watched an Ogre Popenang video essay. Written and presented by Speaker D. He did really good. Animated he has a really Carl good voice. Deranged, Garrett, Alpha Busa, and Dr. White. Script Dr. edited White. by Speaker D, Erndil, Alpha Busa, and Dr. White. Audio composition by Carl the Deranged and Alpha Busa. Audio mixing by Stringstorm. We did a lot music of good music. by Macker, Glowtide, Stringstorm, Carl the Deranged, and Vrinde. In-house art made by Nostalgia, Inktooth, Iron Iroko, Garrett, Elephus, and Rude Rubicante. Elephus, the inheritor. male modeling performed by Speaker D. Mutilation of high male <laughs> modeling performed by... Mutilation. Rindale. Additional music sample from Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines original soundtrack by Rick Schaefer. And Frederick Knutson, you forgot to credit Frederick Knutson when you were recording for the credits. How can you forget our boy? Featuring original oh, World of Darkness God. art by Alex Scheichman, Leif Jones, Michael That's Gatos, very sweet to add all this. Davis, Ron but yeah, Spencer, Colin, one Steve important Pescott, part is David to be Lear. flexible. And if you really want to do a storyline, you need to be basically a shining light and make them moths to the flame. Or turn and weave it. John Cobb, if you Jeff really Rubenstein, want them to get a certain storyline. Make it think... You have to make them think it was their decision. Langdon Foss, John to do so. Fleet, Vince Locke, Tim because, Bradstreet, and yeah. many, many more. Gaming is hard. It's the one Please, reason I haven't tried it because I am scared of the failure. Extraordinary artists who create the lens by which we see our wonderful Aww. world of darkness. Special thanks to Blessed for incurring the wrath of the Varkalak. What? <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> Especially big thank you to all yeah, of the previous Nightfolk on Patreon. Generously funding this. I don't know. There's apparently every once in a while they say, "Great thanks to Blessed for some," and then they will say, "For the for his depraved actions this or something." I don't know who Angus, Blessed is. Rax, Mango Grunt, Matthew McCloud, Bananabot, Benel, Black and White TV, Boy, Blurry Face, Brave Beard, Brian Ross, a lot of bees. But yeah, I'm glad you guys are getting into oh, World of Darkness. I honestly think the setting is pretty interesting. Yeah. But yeah. Now we're we'll just wait for uh, the new the new uh, mage to come in as me. Huh. Anyway, thank you all so much, and we're lucky to have you here. If you like us, consider subscribing. Helping us get bigger. I have a Patreon if you want to look at some of the stuff we watch but we can't watch over here. And yeah, thank you all so much. And we'll see you later.